Greetings from the KENW Broadcast Center on the campus of Eastern New Mexico University. I'm Doc Elder. I'm a professor of history here at Eastern New Mexico University. I also get to host Sports Look right here on KNW, but I'm also the voice of Eastern Athletics. And under those auspices, I'm here hosting the Greyhound Football Signing Special. I'd like to introduce the gentleman to my left. This is Ty Hyatt, the head coach of Greyhound Football. And Coach, welcome to the Football Signing Special. No, thanks, Doc. Looking forward to it. Well, Coach, before we take a look at the signees for the 2022 season, let's take a look back at 2021, your first year as a head coach, and what are your takeaways? Uh, you know, I really feel the same, you know, even like during the season and after the season, you have time to reflect, and as we've been going through recruiting and those things, it, you know, I was really proud of our team. Um, obviously, not as many wins as we wanted to have this past fall, but I think it was one of those things where rolling into this season, um, you know, being hired at the very end of April, getting our coaching staff here, uh, you know, really towards the end of July, being able to finalize everything. Uh, August 5th was really the first time that we had a chance to actually get our whole team together. Um, and I think for a lot of different reasons with COVID and whatever else, but that, you know, when we practiced August 5th, that was the first time that we had actually been able to get together as a group of coaches, players, everything, and actually tee off and be able to put it together and and for us to have about two and a half weeks of practice before going into week one, I was really happy with the, the leadership of, of our seven seniors, uh, really happy with how hard our kids worked. And, and, you know, I thought there were some really good moments this year. And, and um, you know, obviously with the four wins and, 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 you know, you look back on our season and we led at some point during nine out of 11 games. Um, so I think there's a lot of optimism really going into this season. And, and especially, too, where, you know, and I know we're going to get into our signees, but we return 90 players right now in spring camp. And that's a lot of players going into spring ball. Um, a lot of really good players who were all-conference performers who were back, um, you know, specifically names like Mason Richards, who was obviously the Lone Star Defensive Lineman of the Year. Um, like we were talking before the show, like Howard Russell is coming back. He was an all-conference performer. And Cameron Santa Cruz, and he was another one. Um, you know, so we just we have a lot of kids coming back that are now they, they had the growing pains of a freshman season and sophomores. And now all of a sudden they become sophomores and juniors. And, and I think with the addition of these young men and then the other ones that we add later on the spring and summer, um, I think our kids are pretty hungry to be able to get after it and, and get better and look forward to 22. Well, the bad thing about only having seven seniors was you didn't have that senior leadership. But the good thing is you didn't have that many recruits that you needed to bring in. So you were able to specialize and bring in just exactly the guys you want to. So let's just uh, take over and I will let you introduce the individuals that are going to be playing football for Eastern in the fall. Yeah. So so the first one we have here is Christian Carruthers. Um, he's a defensive tackle, uh, played at Albuquerque High School. Um, here in the state and was actually just at NIMI um, the, the past couple of years um, and, and extremely proud of Coach Kurt and, and everyone down at NIMI. Um, Coach Kaiser, who's the offensive coordinator down there, he's actually an Eastern alum. Um, they just won the national championship and very proud of them um, in junior college football. And Christian was a big piece of that puzzle. Um, Literally and yeah. figuratively. Yeah, no, well, be, with being 6'2", uh, 345, and, and he is all of those things. Uh, just a tremendous player, um, really have gotten to know his family very well. He was actually offered a scholarship um, by Eastern coming out of high school and chose to go to NIMI, um, and then we were felt very, very fortunate enough to be able to get him. Um, and he's actually on campus right now going through spring drills with us. Um, but again, just really excited because, you know, we talk about the seven seniors that we lost. You know, two of those uh, seniors, uh, Rakeem Hatchett and Keelan Ferdinand, were defensive tackles. So for us to be able to add Christian here in the middle, um, I thought was a very big piece. And, and, you know, I think one of the things when you come from NIMI is that you have tremendous leadership. You know, you go through the military training, and, and even though maybe a lot of those young men don't end up going into the service, but they have that type of training and academy that they can lean back on. And even in the first three weeks of, of, of spring ball, in spring workouts, I mean, I think that's been something that's been very evident to the players on the team, very evident to our coaching staff. And Christian has been very, 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 very good. And we look forward to him making a lot of plays right there in the middle just to kind of plug up some of those gaps. So we're excited about Christian. All right. 
Um, so now we have Asa um, one day. So Asa is coming to us from Sacramento City College in California. Um, he plays wide receiver, 6'1", 185. Um, Asa is, you know, and it's a pretty prestigious award, um, but they do the all-state junior college teams in California. And Asa was a first-team all-state wide receiver. Um, there were a lot of schools that were after Asa, um, but I think we really have Justin Mannyweather to thank for us being able to get Asa because Justin, um, well, him and Zach, I thought they both had tremendous seasons, but, you know, Justin was the Lone Star Conference Receiver of the Year. Um, and, uh, and so with Justin graduating, you know, Justin actually helped us in recruiting Asa. Um, and I think Asa really saw just the potential for him to come here and be able to, to be able to showcase his ability and help the, and help our program in our quest of the things that we want to do program wise. Um, and Asa is a, you know, Asa is a really long body. He's, he's all of six one. He can stretch the field vertically, which is one of the things that you have to have in this conference because the Lone Star has really good speed. Um, and so for, for Asa to be able to come here and be with us, um, we are ecstatic that he will be here. Um, he's actually finishing up his final six credits at junior college, and Asa will be here this summer, and we are really looking forward to having him join the program. Very good. The next one we have is Ryan Sopizio. Uh, so Ryan comes to us from Norco High School in, High School in California. Um, you know, he, Ryan, so the thing that we really liked with Ryan was that being 6'2", 250, um, and I would imagine that he's probably a little bit heavier than that now that he actually was playing a bunch of different sports in high school, and now he's just really going to focus on in the weight room and those things. Ryan is very multiple. Uh, Ryan played guard. Ryan played center. Um, and his high school in Southern California is one of the toughest divisions in high school football. And, and again, Ryan, uh, very, very strong academically. Um, you know, it's funny that his parents actually have ties out here to Eastern New Mexico, uh, just from some people that they knew from Southern California. And so with them being out here, uh, it wasn't a culture shock, <laughs> you know, with the sagebrush and those things. And, uh, you know, so Ryan visited campus in early January and and we really look forward to him being able to be a, a good anchor on the offensive line in a few years. Very good. Um, so now the next one we have is uh, Zach Congleton. So Zach, uh, quarterback, um, 6'1", 175 from Etiwanda High School. Uh, you know, Zach was one that we identified very, very early in the recruiting process. And we feel very, very lucky to be able to get Zach. Um, you know, as a quarterback, I think one of the things that you look at and Quarterbacks are so hard to recruit because there's so many different elements that take place as far as, you know, can he do this? Can he do that? Um, I would say one of the biggest things with Zach is that he's 16 and one as a starter. And when, when he came on campus, so one of the things that we do with our young men is that we test them and we put them through drills. He actually ran a four, six forty um, as a quarterback, as a quarterback uh, for being six one. And, um, and we love the way he throws the ball. We love the way that he, uh, that he processes information. And when we talk about processing information, just being able to catch the ball and then read the defense or, or read defensive players in the RPO game or in the run game. And, and he does that very, very well. Took care of the ball at an extremely high level. Um, was 20, had 26 touchdowns to three interceptions um, his senior year. And, you know, we really can't say enough about him. Um, but again, the thing that we really love is that as a quarterback, I think one of the elements that will help take us to the next step is having a quarterback that can run. Um, and for him to be able to do that, and again, in his high school league, um, he played some of the toughest competition that you can face in, in high school football. Um, and so we're, again, we're, we're really, really happy that he's coming here. Um, he really sees the vision of, of what we do quarterback wise and what we've done with quarterbacks. And so we're really happy that he'll be with us this fall. Well, I know from having lived down in that area that Etiwanda used to play uh, Fontana, used yep. to play Rialto. You know, that's yep. Ronnie it's, Lott territory. So if you yes. can be successful against kids of that caliber, you're going to be successful on the next level. Well, and I think the thing with him, too, is that you live in a world where, um, especially at quarterback, where you have quarterbacks that transfer if they don't play. And he had some great ones. Like there was actually a Texas recruit that was before him when he was a freshman and other things. And going into his junior year, he wasn't the starter, but he kept battling and kept fighting. And then middle way through his junior year, he became a starter. And then that catapulted into a senior year. 
So then you, I, I just think that says a lot about young men when they really stick with the program and, and they keep on going. And for him to be able to find that success, I think is going to be a great tra transition when he comes into the college game in the Lone Star Conference. Very good. Um, so the next quarterback we have is Daniel um, Ayala uh, out of West Mesa. So Daniel is six foot 190. Um, and Daniel is, is definitely a quarterback that was under-recruited through, uh, through this summer, the past fall, and then up until now. Um, so Daniel was actually a quarterback that we had seen film on, uh, but we actually went to the All-Star game that was held in Roswell this December for all the high school seniors. And, um, you know, for, so for three straight days, I went down to both days of practice and went down to the game, and, uh, and Coach Lynn at Roswell High School told me about him. Coach Cal Fullerton at Clovis High School told me about him. And I was like, oh, all right, Coach Cal, like, we'll, see. we'll see how he is, everything else. Well, watching him play live, I was, I was intrigued. And then we actually had him on a campus visit, and I was really impressed with him. Um, again, just comes from a really good program, um, takes care of the football, which is one of the things that for us at the quarterback position is something that we're always working to improve. Um, and so that was one of the things that I felt that as our coaching staff, he checked all those boxes. Um, and the other thing that I love about him is that he, like all of these kids love football, but it's a big part of his life. And he wants to be at a program that has success. Um, obviously, that's something that goes way beyond, you know, coaches that have been here in the past, but Eastern's been very, very good at football. And so for him, that was really important that he wanted to be somewhere where football was really important to the university, to the community. And, and that was just one thing with Daniel that struck us right away. And we're really excited that he's going to be joining us in the fall. Indeed. Um, so the next young man we have is Martel Mora. Uh, so Martel is from Santa Fe High School, um, 5'11", 175, plays defensive back. Also played running back this past year, was, uh, was actually All-State at both positions. Um, scored a lot of touchdowns for them, but for us, one of the things is that we, we really see him as playing safety. And, and I'll tell you, one of the things with Martell is that we actually had him on campus this summer, and we, we do a big seven-on-seven -seven tournament that actually got started many years ago. Um, but So we had their seven-on-seven -seven tournament, and there was just this kid that was making play after play after play. And again, I get it, seven on seven, you know, it's not real football, but you get to see kids run around and, and do things and see their athleticism. And Martell is a young man that he loves football, I think more than any recruit that I've ever met. Um, you know, they, they kept playing game after game because you, you hit the tournament and then you keep winning and you, <laughs> you just gotta keep playing. And it was one of those days here in Portales where it might've been like 95, and it, I remember, was, yeah, yeah. and it was just so hot, but this young man impressed us so much. And then the very next week, we go up to Cleveland High School with uh, Heath Reidenauer, who is now actually at UNM as a quarterback coach. But Coach Reidenauer is an e and alum, great quarterback from Lovington. Well, we go up there to host camp, and Martell shows up at camp. And Martell shows up, and he runs a handheld 4 4 9 40. And we said, okay, well, you need to run it again. <laughs> like, we're not really sure if this is exactly what, and he comes up again and he does it. And right then I knew that when he ran that time and he showed up again to come to our camp, and this is a few days earlier after we had done our seven on seven tournament, I knew that Martel was gonna be a young man that we wanted to make sure that we had in our program. Um, and I can't tell you how happy we are with him. Like he is, he's the oldest in his family. Um, you know, he plays football, obviously, all-state performer, all-state performer in wrestling, uh, a little-known fact. So he actually, so he was all-state as a junior and a senior. He's been playing the past two and a half years uh, with a broken bone in his shoulder. No. Uh, like, with, well, with his labrum, yeah. So, so he has to get his labrum retorn, excuse me, get his labrum uh, repaired. And he's been playing with that for the past two and a half years. And, and he showed, so uh, one of our assistant coaches and myself actually drove up to Albuquerque last week to, to get a final com few commits and those type things. And we stopped in Santa Fe and it was actually the day that he committed to us. So we stopped by that night to see him at a basketball game and, and had a great time. And he was telling us about this and he's like, yeah, coach, look. And he showed us everything and, and you could see how everything was done. And just for him to play through that and to be an all-state performer and those type things, like. 
to me, that just says so much about him, about his family. Um, you know, Coach Martin is the head coach at Santa Fe High School, just said tremendous things. Uh, I, I can tell everyone that for a New Mexico recruit, I think this is one of the best ones in the state, and I think we hit a home run with Martel. Absolutely. So the next young man, Atta, um, and, and again, you'll have to excuse me, Doc. I'm getting better with all these names. Um, to a toupee? Yeah, to, yeah, there you go. I just call him Atta. Whenever I get him on the phone, that's just what I, what I go with. Um, this young man, so he is all of 6'1". He's actually 6'1 and a half. Um, and then we weighed him last week, and he weighs 215. Um, Atta is, I think, going to be a, a great fit at linebacker here in the Lone Star Conference. Uh, some of the agility drills that we've seen him do, um, you know, his lateral, his lateral quickness is some of the best that, that we're going to have on our team, uh, and especially for someone that big, you know, at linebacker, because I think sometimes at linebacker, you need to be able to run in a straight line, but you need to be able to move side to side, and it's really that quick twitch movement to be able to play in a tackle box to then be able to do the things that you need to do, and Ata does that. Um, Ata is another young man, really, really good GPA, family when the family came to visit um, they were loving it because one of so one of our newest coaches on staff um, Vili Fisiahi so Vili was uh, was an all-american all-region all-conference performer offensive line and then um, and now Vili has actually joined us as a graduate assistant and so Vili has been a tremendous asset for us in our recruiting um, and so then he was able to speak Tongan with Ata and his family uh, which, which I thought was really, really cool. And, and I think one of the things that makes us unique here at Eastern because I think that's always something that's a big part of who we are is that we have a very strong Polynesian culture, yeah, not, not only in the program, but I think at the university athletics. Yes. I think here in the community, there's a very, very unique, very strong, positive culture that where people really take care of each other. And we're really looking forward to having Ata come here, and especially at a Cactus High School, which – has good football in Arizona. Uh, we're, we're really excited about him coming to join us, and, and I know that he's pretty excited. He was one of the first ones to send in his paperwork this morning, uh, so that's one that we're really looking forward to. Excellent. The next one we have is Josh Farner. So Josh plays strong safety, so he really plays kind of that hybrid safety type player at the second level. Um, Josh is 5'10", 175, r really, really strong player um, at a still high school in San Antonio. Uh, Josh, we, we were able to get on him um, here within the past couple months, actually. And Josh has just been, ever since we started recruiting him, he was one of those kids that we identified early and he was all about us. You know, he was, he was looking at Kingsville, he was looking at other schools, but when we were able to get him on the visit, you know, and, and I think that's one thing that's really it's a it's a you know a positive about our coaching staff it's a compliment to them and people on campus and people in the community because once we get young men on campus and their families i really think people just fall in love with it i think that they see you know they look up portales and they see it's okay it's a town of about twenty thousand. what's there to do this and that but then all of a sudden they get here and they just see all the positive with it and and that was josh and we were excited about josh because again like still high school um, they ended up winning a state championship this year, and then for us to be able to get a player off of that team for him to be a for him to be an all district type performer, and for us to get him, uh, we're really excited about him because we see that he's going to be a player that he might not have to play this year, but I think he's going to continue to get bigger, continue to get stronger. He has a really good frame on him, and those are the type of young men that we were looking for in this class. And Josh fits all of those things. Sounds good. So the next young man we have is Isaac Gonzalez. Um, so Isaac, uh, offensive line, 6'1", 285, um, another right out of state here in New Mexico. He, he is very intriguing to us because Isaac actually, um, you know, he actually ended up tearing his ACL in the first game of his senior year. And, but Isaac was actually a first-team all-conference, all-district performer as a sophomore and a junior. And so for him in his senior year, I think it was pretty devastating for him to be able to go through that. So, and he's a pretty good athlete. So actually what they did was that he was playing offensive tackle, um, which I think that he'll transition more to a guard for us, but he was actually playing tackle and then also was a punter. So he actually, and, yeah, so he actually punted the ball and he actually punted it pretty well. 
but then the returner gets past, he makes the tackle and ends up tearing his ACL. So Isaac, though, was actually one of those young men that with uh, like New Mexico preps and some of those type things, he was rated pretty high within the state, but I think his recruiting really fell off because with the injury. Yeah. So with Isaac, we're looking forward to him because I, we really feel like he could kind of be that diamond in the rough where he kind of flew under the radar. Uh, but again, he is, he is one that he's, that he's really strong academically. He's, gonna, he's not only getting football, but he's also getting academic scholarship lot of different things. So I think he brings a lot of things to the table. Um, and again, just a young man that really loves football. Excellent. So Christian Pierce uh, plays defensive back. Uh, for us, he's actually going to play corner. Um, he is all of six foot, uh, 170. He might even be a little bit heavier than that out of Red Oak High School in Texas. Again, really, really competitive football right there in the Metroplex area, just south of Dallas. Uh, Christian Christian is one, like, when you turn on his tape, you can see that he can run. Um, when we actually had him and, and timed him in the 40, he was a, he was a flat 4.50. Wow. Um, so he can, he can really, really yeah. run. Uh, the thing that we really liked with Christian is that his, um, on his film, you see him where he is, so he plays corner, he plays safety, he kind of plays a strong safety hybrid type position. Um, I mean, he, he does everything. He, he returns kicks. So that was one of the things is we were really identifying that when we look in the back end is one, one we look for length, but then we look for, okay, can they run? And Christian can run. Um, and the, the other thing that we really love is the fact that he played multiple positions. So for us, that's one thing that, you know, like this last year we ran into a spot where, you know, if certain players get hurt at a position, we have to be flexible enough that they can move and be able to help the team. And we really feel like Christian fit that bill. Um, now we're excited because we returned quite a few of our starters in the back end that they're all gonna have another year of experience and continue to get better. And I think Christian is gonna do a great job in that room of being able to have some of those kids like like a, like a Cameron Santa Cruz or a Carson Ruckner or a Lino or a Ramel that are gonna be able to teach him exactly what to do. And I think in a few years, he's gonna be a great player for us. Sounds like it. Andre Jones, a wide receiver out of Judson High School, San Antonio, uh, 6'3", 175. Andre is, at, we think that he has an extremely high ceiling um, for us. Um, you know, he's, he's very much similar, kind of like a Zach, where, where Zach, he could have a one-on-one -on -one matchup and win those, especially in the red zone. Um, and Andre, for us, I, you know, his ceiling, again, he's another kid that came here and ran in the four or five range, uh, which is really interesting because typically you see someone that's 6'3 to be able to move that well. Oh, yeah. Typically they're a division one player. Um, but you know, he was one of those kids that I think was just kind of overlooked. Um, it funny, he actually played in a triple option system. So I think that there was some time where people look at those receivers and they're like, ah, you know, can they really play mm -hmm. in more of a pro style set? But we think that he has an extremely high ceiling. Um, you know, comes from a really, really good family, um, has older siblings uh, that have really taken care of him. Um, you know, his, his mom has done a great job of raising him throughout his life. And, you know, again, he just, I can't say enough about Andre because I think when he comes into college, he's, there's going to be a little bit of a curve, just like every freshman. Um, but for him to be 6'3", 175, and he's going to put on weight, and once he catches up to the game, I think he's going to do really, really well in the conference. It sounds like it. Um, Hayden Stewart, uh, so wide receiver, six foot, one sixty-five, at Argyle High School. Again, the Metroplex area. Uh, Hayden is another one that we we were on. We were recruiting. Um, we weren't really sure how fast he was because he on his tape. We said, okay, well, he's running by people and he's doing this, but like really, really, what is the speed of it? Now Argyle plays very, very high level five A football. Um, which is, you know, some of the top, obviously it goes to six, but he very, very good football. And, you know, Hayden was, again, we brought him on campus and, um, you know, he ran a five, a four, five, oh, like, and that was one of the things like with us, when we're looking at kids, when we're recruiting kids, one of the things that I've always, you know, been told from older coaches and, and coaches that I respect, like the head coach at Shepherd and now the head coach at Southern Utah, like you, when you're testing these kids and you look at them, the thing that never lies is that time. Yep. You know, so kids that run that time consistently, 
you know, that, now it's our job as coaches. That's why they put a C on our chest. That's, that's, that's why we got to coach them up and make sure, hey, we get everything up to speed. But for them to be able to run like that, you can't coach that. Um, and for so for Hayden, when he came on and he ran like that for us, and, you know, he is all of six foot, he really good shoulders, like he's got a really good frame. Um, and then the other thing that sent us over the top is that he loves hunting and fishing. So for us, like we said, okay, this is a shit, like he is a greyhound yes. for sure. Um, and so Hayden, for us, we feel like he is going to be a great addition to our wide receiver room. Um, you know, like I said, like we lost Justin, we lost Zach. Um, we brought in Asa, who is going to, you know, bring some experience. Uh, there'll be a couple other kids that we bring in that'll be transfer wise that'll add experience to that. But with Hayden, we really feel that, you know, even as a true freshman, we think that he has a chance to compete in that room. And that's even after spring ball camp, like us getting better offensively. So we're pretty excited about Hayden. And, and I think he is going to fit in very well in Portales. He was already asking me about Rio Doso and Taos and like all these other places. He had been looking up all these type things. So I think he's going to be a great fit. And an interesting factoid for the viewers, Argyle High School was where J.J. Harp, played uh, his high school football before coming to Eastern. So okay. definitely a high level program. Yes, exactly. We're excited about that. Um, the next young man we have is Julian Holland. Uh, so Julian is a defensive tackle. Uh, you know, you you will notice Julian, he's 6'3", 285. Um, at a Centennial High School, we actually have some great players on the program right now from Centennial. And, uh, and I think Julian is going to blend right in with that. Julian is great young man, great academically. Um, you know, so in, at Centennial, he played offensive guard and defensive tackle. What we project him as is a defensive tackle. Um, and for Julian, I would say that like his really big strengths are it's hard to move him. <laughs> yeah. You got a human being that big, it is really, really hard to move him. Um, he does a great job in the weight room. You know, when he came on the visit, and, and what we do is we put out an itinerary for, for every family and every recruit and say, hey, you know, we're going to go look at X, Y, and Z. And we told him that we were going to take him over to the weight room and introduce him and, and show him our weight room, which I think is beautiful. Uh, our new strength coach, Coach Tommy Moore, is doing a great job. We hired him from the University of Texas. And, and Coach Moore comes in there, and, and, we, and he does a little spiel with the recruits and just explain the program and, and show them everything. And Julian was texting me and said, hey, coach, are we going to lift? Are we, are we going to go in here and get a workout? And I said, Julian, let's, let's save that for summer. You know, we'll get you here. We'll take care of those things. Uh, but Julian is just a worker. And, and I think one of the things is that I think that separates Eastern from a lot of other programs is that we have a lot of kids in our program that work, a lot of kids that understand what it takes to be successful, and they're not afraid to roll up their sleeves and – and really be able to, to put in the work that's necessary to, to have that type of success. And I think Julian is going to fit right in. And, and even this morning after he sent in his, his paperwork, he said, Coach, can you send me a workout? Can you send me the things I need to start doing? And which, which I love that. I love that enthusiasm, those type things. I told him, I said, hey, Julian, let's take a couple days and <laughs> let's recover a little bit. Let's, let's do all this. And I said, but no, we will get you what you need. Um, but again, I can't say enough about him about his family. He has little siblings and, and they were ecstatic for him when they were here on the visit and just seeing everything for him. And, and I think he'll be a great addition to our defensive line room, which I feel is really good. I like to hear that. So the next one we have is uh, Tatua. Um, I'll let Doc try and say that last Hauga. name. Hauga. Yeah, there you go. Hey, the thing I like with Tatua is that he just goes by Tua. So I can say Tua. Um, okay, so Tua, defensive end. Again, Cactus High School, um, you know, he's 6'2", 210. Tua, Tua, to me, is out of, out of all of our recruits, and, and again, I love all of our recruits, Tua, to me, has the highest ceiling. Uh, so Tua, when he was here, uh, and, and you know what, like that 210 is what he played at in the fall. That might have been, you know, I, I think when he weighed in for us, he was 220. Um, when he broad jumped for us, he broad jumped nine feet ten inches. Uh, wow! At six two two twenty, wow. he ran a he ran a four six five forty. Uh, Tua to me is is, and you look at him in his face, he, he's still got a little baby face to him. <laughs> you know, he hasn't like really grown into his body yet. And for, and for us with Tua, I I look at him, 
and I just see the potential in him to be a tremendous player. Um, he was an all he was the all region defensive player of the year in Arizona with within his region and all state and all those other type things. But for him, I feel like he was one of those kids that he was an absolute steal for us um, because I think that between the transfer portal and other things, I think a lot of FCS type schools kind of overlooked him. And for us to be able to get him on campus, um, again, for a lot of the same reasons that we talked about with Atta, with you know, just our strong Polynesian culture, with, with feeling comfortable, um, you know, with, with all of those type things. And then obviously the players we have on the team because you go through our list and, and just even our older players like with Aselli and Rappi and, and, and all of those boys being able to take care of, of them and their family and when they come on campus. Uh, Tua, to me, I think has a tremendous ability to be – to be that type of impact player, kind of like a Mason, where mm-hmm. Mason is, you know, he, he's the reigning defensive lineman, co- the conference player of the year. Uh, you know, Tua, Tua, I think, is a freshman, and I think we're really deep at defensive end at the defensive line position. I think Tua has a chance to be that type of player, whether it's defensive end, linebacker, hybrid type player. Um, he has a chance to be able to do some special things here. And, and I get really excited about him because I think that's one of the things you look for in recruiting is that obviously you look for good players. You look for players that can make an impact and those type of things, but you really look for players that, okay, where can we take them? Like, where is his ceiling? Where can he get to with the proper training and investment and those things? And I think between Coach Moore, the rest of campus community and our coaching staff, I think Tua has an extremely high ceiling to be a, a to be a great player in this program. One that you're talking about 15 to 20 years from now. Good you're player. about. So the next one also, uh, you know, I just keep getting more excited. So Sam Archie, offensive lineman, 6'3", 260. Um, he also is at Etiwanda High School, so he actually played with Zach. Uh, Sam, to me, is – I think he's our best offensive line recruit that we brought in. I, I would not be shocked if Sam is is scratching the surface to play right away. Sam, which which I don't say lightly because at offensive line, one of the hardest transitions in college football is the offensive and defensive line. Mm-hmm. I think as a freshman, you can come in and play at receiver. You can play at DB, running back, you know, because there's not as much thinking. There's not as much going on. When you get inside with the O-line and D-line, typically you're playing grown men. They've been in programs for three, four, five years, and they've had like strength coaches, the whole deal. Sam, to me, is, again, one of those kids who, you know, he's only played three years of high school football. Um, before that, he was a basketball player. And so when he, come, when he came on campus and was doing all of his movement, and then you watch his tape, you know, because we watch their film over and over and over again. You know, we reach out to high school coaches to get full game film to make sure that we're not missing anything. And again, Sam to me has such a high ceiling and that he, he could be a tremendous offensive lineman because of his ability to move people off the football, for his ability to move out in space, uh, because that's one of the things that we like to do offensively is, you know, like, like a lot of people call it the buck sweep. You know, maybe more people nowadays call it pin and pull, but whatever it is, um, tomato, tomato, right? You're getting people out in space and pulling and doing those type things. And his athleticism is going to be one of the best on our team right now coming in as a freshman. Wow. Um, and, and, again, it was funny, too. Like, his parents, um, his parents have connections out here. Um, and, you know, and his mom and dad love football. You know, they are all about it. And, and I would say that his visit was one of the most enjoyable visits because his parents were just all about it. You know, they wanted their son to be at a good place educationally, um, wanted him to be able to play high-level football. I think one of the things that – really is great about Portales is that it's such a great community, that it's safe, um, that there's people here in the community that look after each other, that take care of each other. And for our kids coming in, I think that's important to their parents is that if they're going to send Junior to a school, they want to know that, that it's a safe place. They want to know that they can be taken care of. And, and Sam's parents felt that. And so when Sam called us, we were worried because there were a lot of other Division II schools that were on Sam and and going after him, and when he called a couple days ago and committed, there were a lot of high fives going up in the staff room because Sam, it, it's hard to find young men that are 6'3", 260, 270, that move as well as he does, 
And, and you can tell with his basketball background and everything else, I, I think that he's going to be a great player for us. Sounds good. Uh, the next one here is probably a really familiar name that people um, have obviously seen before. Uh, Kobe Russ out of Amarillo, Texas. Uh, he play, he'll play strong safety for us, uh, 6'2", 205. So Kobe has a very interesting story. Kobe was actually on the hiring committee when I got hired here at Eastern. And, um, and, you know, and so when I got hired, Kobe was one of the first ones I reached out to. Uh, like him and Vili and a couple of the other boys that were on that committee. And when I got here, I think it was one of the things that Kobe was, I think between COVID and I think between, uh, you know, Coach Lee leaving. And I, I just think that there was a lot of transition and Kobe was, you know, I think he looked at it and said, okay, well, maybe it's time for me to try something else. Maybe it's time for me to try to another program or anything. Um, he ended up going to Missouri Western this fall and, I will tell you that when he reached out to me and said, Coach, you know, I think I made a mistake. I would love to come back to Eastern if you'll let me. I will tell you that that was one of the best phone calls that I ever received. Uh, Kobe was an all-conference performer in 2019. Yes. Uh, comes from a great high school program. Uh, I, I can tell you right now that him and our morning workouts and our morning competition, mat drills and those things, he commands the respect of the program. And this is even after, you know, because in 2019 with the bowl win, there was a lot of people that ended up graduating or whatever else, and there was a lot of new faces that came in 21. And for him to show up this semester and to be able to command that type of respect through his work ethic and just how he treats people, uh, Kobe's not a man of many words. <laughs> like, you know, we'll have him on, you do an interview with him or anything, he doesn't really say a lot, but what he does say, he means. And, and I will tell you, every single day Kobe shows up and just works to get 1% better each day, which is all we ask of our kids. And Kobe is that young man. And, and you know, so Kobe only has one more year to play, but we, I could not be happier, you know, and us as a program that Kobe is back because I feel like he is going to be the backbone of our defense, and we're very excited to have him back. And uh, I'm glad you uh, told that story because I was freaking out. I was like, Wait a second, didn't he play here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he did. Now he's yeah. back. So the next young man we have is Cam Smith. Uh, Cam plays defensive back in, in kind of a hybrid again. Like he played corner, played safety, those type positions. Um, 5'11", 185 at a Midland Christian, uh, so not too far down the road. Cam is another one that when we identified it, we love the things about Cam is that he played multiple positions. Again, great student, good family structure, the whole deal. Uh, you know, I, I think he'll be good with all those type things, work ethic. But we love the fact that he played multiple positions, which one of the things that we learned from this past year is that, you know, if, if you play left corner, you got to play right corner. Mm -hmm. If you can play free safety, you can play the weak safety. Like, you, you've got to be able to move and do those type things in, in college football. And we feel like Cam will fit that position. Now, at safety, we feel like we talk about the addition of Kobe Russ. We feel like we're pretty strong because you got Cameron Santa Cruz coming back and Carson Ruckner and Jaden Minix. Like we have kids at Raquan Beverly. Like we have kids that have played in games and are getting better and getting stronger. And we feel like Cam will be a great addition to that room because he's going to have some older players in front of him that help mentor him and really help uh, do those type of things. And it helps too that he's pretty good friends with Trey Huber, uh, which Trey again, like you spoke at corner, we have some great corners. Trey played a lot of minutes for us and did some great things. So I think Cam will be a really good fit in that defensive back room. You bet. The next one we have is Brendan Davis. Uh, so Brendan is just right down the road at Mule Shoe High School. Linebacker, uh, 6'2", uh, 200 pounds. I would even say he's probably a little bit heavier than that. Um, he does play basketball, so he's burning a lot of calories doing those things. Uh, but Brennan, uh, you know, Brennan is another one where you watch his film and – he, he makes a ton of plays. So he played linebacker, he played tight end, and you look at it and, you know, it, it's 2A football. So you're like, okay, well, it's a little bit smaller, high school football, those type things. Well, when we had Brendan on campus, I can tell you that between his wingspan and his height and how well he moved laterally, we, we were ecstatic to be able to get him. Uh, there was other schools looking at him with Midwestern and WT and some of those, and for us to be able to get Brendan, we thought was great, and especially because his, his father, so his father actually coaches at Mule Shoe, but for a while they lived in Clovis. 
um, and, and they ended up being able to move over to Mioshu later on. And so for, for us to be able to get someone from the area, his caliber of play, um, now, again, I think Brennan is one of those young men that it takes time to adjust. I don't know if Brennan comes in day one and all of a sudden says, hey, I'm a day one starter. But his lateral movement, his frame, his ability to move in space, uh, his toughness, which is something that we love, I think that Brennan is going to find his way on the special teams pretty quick. And I think you know that's the challenge that we have for all of our young men is that you want to be able to go, go into that say, okay, we'll find a way to get on special teams. Once you get on one or two special teams, all of a sudden it's amazing. You start making plays. Coaches have more confidence in you that you can now make plays, whether it's defense, offense, whatever else. And, and I think that he's just one of those young men that are going to show up every day, work his tail off, kind of like a Colby Russ. Not going to say a lot of words, but when he shows up, he, you know, he just commands the respect of, other, of the other young men because he just works that hard. And you know, we couldn't be more ecstatic to have a young man where you can throw a stone over to Muleshoe and he's going to be coming here to school. So we're really excited about Brendan. I like that too. Uh, so the next one we have is Samu uh, Vave. Uh, Samu, he, he again, uh, so he is actually a transplant. So he went to Nolan Catholic High School, uh, again in the Metroplex. He actually is from Florida. Um, so his last few years of high school, they ended up moving to the Metroplex, and that's where he went to high school. Uh, Samu, again, he is 6'2", 220, and when you turn on his tape, Man, he can run. He can run. He can move. His wingspan, again, like he's one of those kids where he puts out his arms and you would think that he's eight foot tall, um, which is one of the things that we love when we're talking about those hybrid type players, when we're talking about those defensive ends, when we're talking about those linebackers. Like you want length uh, because, again, it just from an offensive side, of the, like it's harder when you have longer defenders, right? Um, and Samu fits that bill. Again, he's one that I think that he's going to be a great fit culturally, going to be a great fit on campus uh, with our players. He already knows a lot of players on our team, uh, which I always think is a great sign that when you have when you have good young men in the program and then you're looking at players and you figure out, okay, well, he's a really good player. Oh, wow, he knows so-and-so and, and X, Y, and Z, and we feel like he's going to be another great addition to the program. Looking forward to it. Um, so now the, the next two young men that we're going to talk about, they're actually twins. Uh, so the first one is Dylan. Um, and, and again, Cordateri. I don't know, I always just call him Dylan. <laughs> so, Cordateri sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But, uh, but at a Raton High School, uh, so linebacker, 6'2", 200 pounds. Uh, so Dylan was actually, so he actually played quarterback for Raton as well. So for those not familiar, Raton's a pretty small school right up next to the Colorado border. Uh, so Dylan played quarterback, and he played linebacker. Um, he's going to transition more to linebacker here, uh, here at Eastern. But I will tell you, it, again, he loves football, is very, very serious about it, uh, a 4.2 GPA. I mean, just one of those kids that I think is going to be a great, great addition into our program. Again, it's, I think it's going to take him time to be able to develop and grow into the program. Uh, but I think that he's a young man that understands that. He knows, okay, I've got to get a little bit bigger, got to get a little bit stronger. But the thing that I told him and then the next young man that we talk about is you can't coach 6'2". Nope. You can't coach 6'2", and you can't coach young men that, that run that well at 6'2". Um, so we're really happy about Dylan. And then the next young man, too, that we, they're bringing in, so they're actually twins, is Matt. Um, and, again, Matt is uh, – we feel that Matt is going to be a great player in this program. Uh, so when, when recruiting Matt, it actually came down to us in, in Colorado Pueblo, uh, which is a, is a very, very good program. Uh, and we feel very fortunate that Matt chose to, to, to come here. And, and I think it's really cool that his brothers, they're going to be able to come down here and, and play ball and, and go to school together. Uh, but Matt would be, in, be a linebacker, uh, 6'3", 215. He runs extremely well for being, for being a linebacker of that size, uh, which – yeah, I will tell you one of the things is going through this year, being in the Lone Star Conference, I think that he fits that size of linebacker that we see in the conference week in, week out. You know, because we talk about him and Atta and, and Brennan, some of those. I mean, I, I feel like with that size and length and those type things, like that is what we play against. And I feel like we're bringing in those kids to be, to be able to match that. Um, but again, Matt is just, I, I can't say enough about Matt because he was, so he was an all-state player, at linebacker. He was the defensive player of the year um, in the state. 
uh, also turned around and played tight end. You know, so he was joking with me. He said, hey, coach, well, if you need me to play tight end or anything, I can catch some touchdowns. And I said, hey, whatever it takes. Uh, but again, Matt is, you know, and you just talk to people about Matt. You talk to people about uh, like his high school coaches and counselors, just how good of a kid he is. And, and him and Dylan are both tremendous kids. The thing I will tell you that really stuck out with us about Matt is that he is constantly in the weight room. He's constantly working to get stronger. Uh, to improve his game, just all those little things that you look for. Uh, because I think one of the things that, like in our team this last year, we were so young and we have some good players, but we weren't as strong as other teams. Yep. And, and that is one of the things that I don't think will ever change in football. I don't care if you're a, a flex bone or a pro style or spread, whatever you are in defense, typically the team that can move the most 45s in the weight room has a chance to be really good. And typically when you move weight, you, you're good at blocking and you're good at tackling, which is what football comes down to. And Matt, that's one of the things that we loved about him, kind of like Julian, is that they love the weight room, they understand what it takes. And for us to bring in kids of that level, to be able to have them automatically plug them in, to be able to build on the things that Coach Moore um, and everything else, and what Coach Weir is being able to do athletic department-wise, I think is a tremendous asset. So both Dylan and Matt, uh, we are really, really happy that they're coming. And I think, too, like in the state, you have, you know, Raton is a small high school. You know, there's not a lot of people there. And, and I think that they kind of enjoyed it because the hometown I'm from is 1,600 people, you know, and they thought that that was kind of big. And to, to me, here in the state, there's some really good players who come from these small high schools, um, kind of like a Cameron Santa Cruz out of Eunice. I mean, you just you come across these kids where they might not get recruited by a lot of other schools, because it's such a small school and they say, oh, well, we're not going to look at it. But I think those kids do really, really well here. And I think both Dylan and Matt fall into that category. Well, if they can be as good as Danny Cummings, who came out of Raton to play defensive back for us, then I'm 100% yeah. <laughs> with you on that one. Uh, so the next young man we have is Larry Williams. Uh, so with Larry, what we did is we're just going to put him as an athlete. Larry was, so 6'1", 180 out of Escoto High School in Lubbock. Uh, Estacado has been very, very good to us when it comes to being able to produce great players. Like, well, one of them this last year, Rakeem Hatchett, I thought did a tremendous job for us. Uh, you know, Larry, so Larry was actually the, the all, all perfect, like he was the player of the year in their conference, in their district. And Larry played receiver. Larry returned kicks and punts, played defensive back. Larry is a very gifted athlete. You know, Larry, Larry did everything for them, and, and we really can't say enough about him. And one of the things that we really looked at as a staff is, okay, well, what is he going to play? And I kept telling the coaches, I said, well, you know what? We'll figure out a place. <laughs> Kids that are that good, that run that well, that can move. Um, and, and, you know, it's funny, too, because when you look kids and when you look at them run, you can tell the kids they have really smooth hips because they can one-step cut and do some of those type things. And Larry, like you just see that on film with Larry right away. Uh, I think the other big thing for Larry was being able to be somewhere where it was semi-close to home, uh, for being able to have that type of support, you know, from, from family and those type things. And I think that's one of the great things with Lubbock is that it's about, depending on where you're at, an hour and a half, hour 45 away, it's far enough away where you have that little bit of independence, but yet close enough where you can go get a home-cooked meal, you know, those type things. Yep. Uh, when you're traveling and playing, it's easy for family to be able to get to games and those things. So, again, Larry, Larry is tremendously gifted, and we're excited about him. All right. So now the next young man, uh, Brody uh, Jarquez, so defensive end, 6'3", 230, out of Boleyn High School. Um, so it's funny because Boleyn High School, their new head coach is Coach Andrew McGraw. So Coach McGraw... Um, just got there, uh, I mean, really, like, I think beginning of August, end of July, and did a tremendous job with them into the playoffs and did a really, really good job with that program. Well, he hits me up and says, hey, just so you know, Coach, we, we, have, we have a young man here. He said he's really raw. Um, you know, he hasn't played a ton of football, but I'm telling you he can play in the Lone Star Conference. And for – Andrew wouldn't know. And, and he would know, exactly, because he's done a great job here and he would know who can play – and Brody was actually, he was the 5A Defensive Player of the Year and, and coming out of Boleyn High School. And, and let me tell you, Brody, he is another one that 
my biggest criteria, like when we're recruiting kids, I tell our coaches, I say, okay, well, they need to make sure, okay, we've got academically, like we check those things. I said, before anything else, they have to love football. Brody loves football. You know, now obviously he's a great player. He's talented, all those type things, but he loves football. And, you know, he was actually one of our last commits going into it. And we were really, you know, we were fighting a lot of schools for him. And I was just sitting there crossing my fingers. Okay, we've got to get Brody. And Brody, you know, I just told him, I said, Brody, what is the most important thing to you? And he said, he said, coach, obviously I want to get my degree. He said, I want to see how far football can take me. I don't know how far that is. I don't know what that looks like, but I love football. And that, that is what is really important to me. And, and I said, okay, well, if football is the most important thing to you, I said, you need to pick a university where football is important, where tradition is strong, the expectation is to win, and for you to be able to be developed, to be able to get the most out of it, which, you know, Coach Torrance Brown, our defensive line coach, you know, Coach Brown played at Penn State. And, you know, he had a chance to be able to get into the NFL, but then tore his ACL. And so he, he knows what it takes to be able to get to a high level. And so I told Brody that, and he said, Coach, you're right. I'm coming to Eastern. And so for us with Brody, he's again, he, to me, he falls right in line of Tua with some of those other guys where his ceiling, his ceiling is so high. Brody was the 5A defensive player of the year, and Brody doesn't, like, he's still learning technique. <laughs> And, and he was playing both sides of the ball because he was also an all-state performer at tight end. So for us, like with Brody, uh, again, you look at schools and a lot of people, they might not go into that high school because uh, are they going to be players? And we feel that Brody is a home run for us and we're excited to get our hands on him. Definitely sounds like it. So Xavier Campbell, um, he is a young man um, at a Lakeview Centennial High School. Uh, again, really, really good player, offensive line, 6'1", 300, uh, play center. You know, for him, it, he makes a lot of plays, a lot of plays. Um, again, we're, we're really, really looking forward to him being able to actually do some things, Cause especially in the center. You want to be able to have a young men right there that, um, you know, can anchor in, can really move some people, those type things. Um, and, and we feel like with him, when you watch him on film and you know, and you look at his graphic right here, that is some meat in the middle. Yes. You know, so we really the feel, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Like he's <laughs> gonna be able to do some damage right here. So we're really looking forward to him. Excellent. You know, so now we have Nate Jimenez at a Centennial High School. Um, you know, again, like we talk about we talk about high level football. You know, we have kids from Centennial that have done really, really well here. And for him, you know, it, the thing that really turned me on to him was that, you know, you look at, you know, Matter Day High School, the best high school program this year in the country in Southern California. You turn on Nate's film, he is making play after play after play against the best high school in the land. Now, they didn't win the game, but for a young man like that to be able to make those type of plays against some of the best competition that you're going to see at the high school level – to me, it was one of the things that just said, okay, this is exactly who we need to go after. Because for him to come into the Lone Star Conference, which is, you know, you could argue between the MIAA and the Lone Star is the best Division II conferences in the country. So now you have a young man like that where, for him, it's not going to be a culture shock. <laughs> when we roll into WT in a 10,000-seat stadium or these other type places where, hey, this is high-level football, I think he is going to thrive in our system, and especially where we love to be able to get the ball out in space. We want to be able to use the quick passing game, those type things, and get people in one-on-one -on -one situations, and we feel that he's going to do a great job. Yeah, he looks like a slot receiver written all he over. He does, things. yeah, yeah, and, and he's quick and shifty in those things. Um, so, yeah, the, the other young man we have here, uh, Tristan Brandon. So, Tristan, again, he's at a Estacada High School uh, right there in Lubbock. Defensive tackle, 6'2", 265. Tristan is another young man that when, when he came on campus, you look at his frame, he's not done growing. Like, again, you can just kind of tell with recruiting. You see enough young men over the years, you really see, okay, is he, is he tapped out or is he going to continue growing? And Tristan, again, baby face, like he, he is going to keep growing into his frame. The thing that we love with Tristan is that, so Larry was the overall player of the year in the district. Tristan was the defensive lineman of the year in the district. And, and when you're talking about that district with Monterey, like a bunch of those schools, 
I think that that says a lot about a young man when, when he's able to do that. And for him, I, I really think that his ceiling, our coaching staff is going to be able to do a lot with him. Because Tristan was one of those, when you turn on the tape, he might take two steps the wrong way, but all of a sudden he's just going redirecting and making the play. right? And, and it was one of those things where, again, he didn't start playing football until high school. But to me, that's not a turnoff because – some of these kids, they start playing so young, by the time they get to their senior year of high school, they're kind of done. They're like, okay, well, I don't want to do this anymore. Yep. I really like it when a kid says, okay, well, I start playing as a freshman. He's only played for four years, and now you're telling me we have another four to five years to develop him and help him grow and just keep on and, and maturing and the whole type deal. And so for us to be able to get Tristan again, there were schools that we were battling on him, and for us to get him we felt was just – a we feel very, very fortunate. And, and again, with our defensive line, we feel that we're really strong because you have kids like Roppy and Aselli inside and you have uh, Kevin McCracken, and you just have kids like that. Well, and Christian that we just added, you know, you take a kid like Tristan and all of a sudden we just decide, hey, you're going to redshirt. We're going to lock you in the weight room for a year, <laughs> let you lose, and then see what happens. I, I think he is one of those young men that is going to be able to, in a few years, we're going to be talking about him consistently when he's able to just continue to grow and mature. And, you know, I know that he kind of rounds out the class, but I, I think he's going to be a great addition for us in the Greyhounds. Well, Coach, a uh, really impressive group of young men that you've recruited uh, from a lot of different areas. And uh, you pointed out that uh, there may be a couple more that will uh, be <laughs> in the fold by the time we start uh, fall camp. Yeah, I, I think there will. I think that's probably the – thing that you're going to see more and more in college football is, and I think a lot of people, even people that aren't familiar with college sports, they hear about this transfer portal and they hear about the movement and those type things. And for us, I think one of the things is that we're going to be able to do is as we go throughout spring ball, we're really going to be able to identify here's where we're strong. Maybe here's where we need to improve, right? Because we, we do need to make improvements. And so for us, I think part of our plan with going in with the signing class was that we're going to add some great high school kids. We're going to add a few mid-year guys, but then we're really going to be able to identify the things that we need to address in April, May, June, kind of go along those lines. Um, and our coaches, you know, we we celebrated this morning, uh, but then tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock we'll be right back at it, you know, because you can never start too early on getting those pieces. And I think the thing that we have a great opportunity on is, you know, one of the things that Eastern's done a great job of for a long time is that with – some of those junior college kids, they do great here, you know, because they, they go to a junior college, whether it's Northern California, Southern California, Kansas, wherever it is, and, and they have already have their associate's degree. And then they come here and they're like, okay, well, I'm here for two years. I can finish out and get my bachelor's. Man, I can come here and, and I can have a chance to play right away, being a little bit older player, being to have a little bit more experience. Uh, you know, you look at players like such as Keelon. Or you look at players like Zach Fields or Justin Maniweb like, or Vili, right? You look at those type players, and, and I think you can kind of go through the rosters over time here, and you can see that those players have been really, really successful. And I think that's our plan this spring is that we're going to add uh, not a whole roster full, you know, but we're going to add four to six transfer players in positions that can help us along with, you know, the talented kids that we have now to be able to sprinkle them in. Uh, because I can tell you with any transfer player we bring in, we, know, we never want to disrupt the team culture, the team dynamic that we have. Um, and that's what we do in the spring. That's what we do in the weight room. That's what we do through spring ball is that, is that we establish that. But I think with the young men that we add uh, throughout these, the spring and summer months, I think they're really going to help us in our quest as we begin training camp and go into week one. Well, Coach, can't wait until August when we actually get to see your product on the field. Yeah, well I, well, I will tell you, we start spring practice March 30th, and, and I will tell anyone that they are more than welcome to come to spring practice, um, as long as you're not wearing maroon, right, with W2. <laughs> uh, you can come to practice all you want and be able to be a part of it. Uh, I just think that that's one of the things that in our program we want to be very open, that any of our community members, anyone wants to come support some of our young men, because I know our young men do service here in town, and they go to church in town, and and, and our community does a great job of supporting them. So anyone that would like to come, uh, we start March 30th, and we will practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday morning. So uh, if you ever hear the music going on or anything like that, 
just come on over and take a look at what we're doing. I live in the neighborhood. I can attest <laughs> to that. So, Well, Coach, thanks so much. It was a pleasure to have you on for your first uh, signing special, and uh, best of luck in the 2022 campaign. Great. Thanks, Doc. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up the signing special. So for my friend, the head football coach of Eastern Mexico University, Ty Hyatt, for everybody on the staff at KNW, this is Doc Elder saying, so long.